Uh, we know how much pressure certainly the prime minister is under to open these restrictions uh, in mid-July. But Merkel had some cautionary tone last week. Today it's Hong Kong uh, barring travelers from the U.K. beginning uh, July 1. What, what is the status right now of European travel? Well, I, I think it's fair to say that we never anticipated it. There was going to be a, you know, a straightforward recovery. We always knew that it's going to be bumps along the way. But clearly, you know, with the successful rollout of the vaccination, we believe that much of European travel could be opening up in in a safe way. You know, we we, we can see that there's a clear breakage and and between the link of the cases of infections and and uh, severe hospitalization cases if you are double vaccinated. And with the UK now being at you know, in the 19th of July, two thirds of the adult population where they have two jabs, we believe that uh, there will be and could be a, a safe restart of travel in a much greater extent than what we've seen today. Yeah, that was certainly uh, Johnson's comment uh, earlier today. That is, uh, the cases may rebound a bit, but the hospitalizations and deaths are certainly nothing like what you saw uh, pre-vaccine. So where does that leave the industry in terms of their argument? And, and do you think uh, these reopenings really do happen in the next couple of weeks? Yes, I, I do think that they will. Now, I have said that, you know, earlier as well, but I think that, they, you know, with, with the, the data and evidence shows that you could open up this in, in a safe way. There's no reason why you shouldn't see, for instance, in the UK, more destinations being added on the so-called green list, which is the low-risk countries. And you could also see that you should remove all the restrictions from the green list. And, and what the member states in, in, the, in Europe are doing right now very much is allowing everybody who has a double, uh, had a double shot to the vaccination to travel without any restrictions at all. And, and we urge the UK government to do the same thing. There, it's not justified by any medical data or science that UK should isolate itself in the way that it's doing here today. We welcome the fact that they did add on now Malta and the Balearic Islands and, and Madeira, but it's too little too late and many more destinations should come onto that green list. Uh, last week here in the States, we had our, our Chamber of Commerce in Washington uh, lean on the government to start opening restrictions, try to get some international travel back in this country. Certainly for New York City, it's a huge issue uh, for international tourism, try to revive uh, Manhattan, for example. Can I just ask you what you think about Transatlantic? And, and is that going to be a second half story? Well, we, we don't operate in a transatlantic flight. We're the second largest airline and focusing really on travel within, within Europe. But clearly what we've been asking the governments to do is to be transparent on the decision making. What constitutes safe travel? You know, what are the number of cases of infections per 100,000 as an example that you would deem to be okay to live with? Remember that this is not about approaching this from a zero COVID perspective. This is about managing a risk, not zero risk. And what we've been calling out and the day of action was one of those examples where we said, let's be transparent with the data on what is actually going to be needed in terms of those criteria to actually make the travel re reopen in a safe way. The most in-depth analysis shows that you could put much of Europe onto that green list. Because what matters is the rate of the vaccinations in the UK and the rate of infections elsewhere. And of course, then also the issues of variants of concerns. But there are plenty of data to support the evidence that that could be done. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.